WinBet is live in Tennessee and bringing you the action of real money sports betting right in the palm of your hand. Now you can get in on the action with all of your favorite teams across NBA, NFL, NHL, MLB, MLS, and more. Don't forget to take advantage of the generous promos, great odds, and unique parlays available in Tennessee on the WinBet app. Head to the App Store to download the WinBet app and sign up today. First-time bettors will receive a risk-free sports bet of up to $500. Terms and conditions apply for all promotion. Get the details at winbet.com. W-Y-N-N-B-E-T dot com. Must be 21 or older and present in Tennessee. Gambling problem? Call the Tennessee Red Line. 1-800-889-9789. Grizz fans, the official Grizzlies mobile app is your key to the game. It's an all-in-one experience updated with even more functionality. You can keep track of a team with news, social media, the schedule, stats, and the standings. And you can log into Grind City Media to watch and listen live to streaming content like The Chris Vernon Show and Rise and Grind. You can check out Grind City Media articles, videos, podcasts, and GCM talent. See what's going on right here at FedEx Forum with our concert and event calendar. Plus, you can find detailed information on seating and concessions with Arena Maps. You can take the app into FedEx Forum as your mobile wallet, use it as your ticket to the game for Grizz Den mobile pickup, and as contact-free payment for Arena Concessions. The official Grizzlies mobile app, your key to the game. Need some barbecue nachos, brisket, ribs, maybe a cheese and sausage plate? The Rendezvous is now open for curbside and carryout. They also deliver through a few of the popular delivery apps. While not much changes in that alley basement, you will see a few small differences and additions. They are open from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday. And for the first time ever, they have dessert, key lime pie tart, chocolate chest pie tarts, and so much more. Spend some time downtown and visit our friends at The Rendezvous, a family-owned restaurant in downtown Memphis Alley since 1948. Acadian Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum, serving the greater Memphis area with exceptional emergency and non-emergency pre-hospital care. Acadian is looking for more Grizzlies fans to join our growing team of EMTs and paramedics with opportunities in Memphis and other markets. Employee-owned, nationally recognized Acadian Ambulance Service. Learn more at memphisemsjobs.com. If you've been told that you snore loudly, making choking noises, or gasp for air while sleeping, if so, you may have obstructive sleep apnea. One in four adults in the United States has obstructive sleep apnea. If left untreated, it can cause morning headaches, daytime sleepiness, high blood pressure, heart attack, stroke, or diabetes. Call Mid-South Pulmonary and Sleep Specialist PC, the official pulmonary and sleep practice of the Memphis Grizzlies, at 901-276-6507. I was like the no. MVP of summer league. No, you won. Second year. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I think Nate Robinson won all those. Listen, Didn't you yo, win like seven MVPs in a row? Right. This dude said he was summer league MVP. <laughs> Tony. <laughs> Tony, they didn't even have an MVP in 2005. <laughs> Uh, that's what I'm trying to tell you. So you were there. <laughs> <laughs> so you were your, your self-made MVP. The Chris Vernon Show, live weekdays at noon on GrindCityMedia.com or wherever you get your podcast. Welcome to Rise and Grind with Jessica and Megan, live on GrindCityMedia.com. Now, here's your hosts, Jessica Benson and Megan Triplett. Good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Jessica Benson, Megan Triplett, CJ Hurt with you here this morning. Time to rise and grind. The sun came back out. That's cool. It was really gloomy yesterday morning, and I didn't realize it until after the show, and I walked out, and I was like, oh. Oh, yeah, I was. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's yeah, okay. I did. <laughs> today, today, today. Hopefully, it'll be a little bit better. A little bit better. We have a lot going on sports-wise today. So we do. Yesterday whatever was you need kind of to do. A nice break. It was. What well, did I not do? A full break. What did I watch last break? night? Oh, I watched Real Housewives of New York last oh. night. Mm -hmm. it was a, this episode was very uncomfortable. It was a very uncomfortable episode to watch. Um, wasn't my favorite. It almost like time made me feel like I don't think I should. Maybe I should separate myself from the Real Housewives franchise. I'm not, not sure. Not uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, but I'm not sure yet. You know, I say that 24 hours later, I'll probably be watching Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Oh, and I watch All American. So all the positivity that I said last that week is out this gone. week. So just know that. Well, I watched Gossip Girl, finally. And speaking of uncomfortable, it's a little uncomfortable to watch. I didn't realize that, I mean, it makes sense, but they're only doing one episode at a time. Mm -hmm. So the first episode's the only episode that's out. And then we watched another show on HBO Max called The White Lotus, which has Connie Britton in it. And I just oh. I always love Connie Britton I and like Jennifer Connie. Coolidge. Another weird one that has one episode out that I'm not sure yeah. where it's going exactly. But We've been... Um spoiled and i think like yes. the pandemic and then like how streaming how the streaming platforms have been working they've spoiled us completely from the sense of we expect our shows to just be like just drop all 12 out 12 episodes mm -hmm. just drop all eight and i will say that it, you know you, you, you do forget what it's like to have to sit and wait a week for another episode and like even watching tv with my nephew a lot i don't think he gets the concept of commercials like he doesn't get that concept that at all. That makes me so sad yes. because kids commercials were the best oh, yeah. commercials. Yeah. And even now, like when that NFL game was on Nickelodeon, that was the most I've watched Nickelodeon in a long time. And mm -hmm. to go back to the commercials of being like games and fun foods mm -hmm. and all those nostalgic hits where you would be like, mom, mom, I want yeah. this. Like I miss that. Yeah. Well, think about like, if, especially for like this millennial generation who are having children, who are having kids, a lot of them do not have cable. So, like, my sister and her husband, they don't have cable, so he doesn't know. So when he comes to our house and we're watching something, and I turned on Nick Jr. for Paw Patrol, mm -hmm. he was like, when the commercial came on, he was like, Mimi, speed up. Mimi, Mimi. And I was like, no, we, we have to wait. Like, it, I, I can't do because I was watching it live. And I'm like, oh, goodness, this, this, poor, this poor guy does not know what the skip. He knows how to skip ads on YouTube, and he doesn't know what commercials are. Wow, I never thought about that. Do you know how much patience you learned from watching commercials and just having to sit there? And you didn't have a phone, so it's mm -hmm. not like you could like scroll. You just sat and watched commercials, and that's how you sold a lot of stuff. Going back and watching those older TV shows from back in the day, you realize if it's a four-minute commercial break and you get two of those or three of those a show, 30-minute show, that's eight to 12 minutes right there. Yeah. And then some of them, X-Men has this real bad. Gargoyles does it too. Where they recap for five minutes what happened in the last episode, so you're there for like ten minutes of TV show, man. Mm. Mm. They've had to work harder. The writers have had to work <laughs> a little harder. Does your nephew watch? We were just when we were with Chris's family. His cousin has a two year old mm -hmm. or three year old, just turned three, and he watches YouTube videos. He watches like ASMR videos, mm -hmm. you know, like the sound effect yeah. type stuff, like unraveling. Oh. Like this one was unraveling, um, like suckers, oh. like the wrappers, and no. taking them off. I was like, what is that? My no. niece is was childhood? hanging out with my five-year-old niece. God bless her. She's like, Uncle CJ, Uncle CJ, watch this with me. And it's just magnets. Somebody has magnets, and they do weird things with the magnets. She finds yeah. it hilarious. And tiny food. Apparently, there's a whole YouTube channel dedicated to cooking yeah. tiny food. She loves every minute of it. I have watched it. the YouTube channel, Cooking Tiny Food. It, it, you think that it's like not entertaining, but then you, then you get sucked into it, and you're like, why am I watching this? But I will say, when I do have children, I'm going to be that parent. I'm just going to try it out. Have a YouTube channel. Just have them sit there and, pl and play with toys. Or opening toys because that's what these kids are making money off of. It's like these these to these toy companies just send children toys, and the child just sits on YouTube and just plays with them. There's like some two or three year old who's like super wealthy off of just opening toys and playing with them on YouTube. Can we do that with like French fancy fries? clothes and bags oh. or French fries? Today's National Mac and Cheese Day. If we want to <laughs> move on to another type, did you of see food. that story? Is it? I I saw it and I didn't click it because I thought it might have been fake. That like. CJ, look it up. Kraft is trying to have ice cream. No. Kraft macaroni no. and cheese ice cream. Like, that. I'm pretty sure no. I saw that. I don't forget what I saw it on, and I didn't click it. I was like, this, this, this has to be, tr like, untrue. No. But then when you just said that, I was like, oh, maybe that's why it came it up. Yeah. Sure. It's real. It's, it's real. real. It's on. Uh, I'm looking at yeah. Credible Site. We all show. think today is credible, right? The Today Show is saying Kraft mac and cheese ice cream, and they're telling us everything that we need Ew. to know about it. 
it's Yeah, we orange. can't be doing that. There's no reason to do that, people. Imagine thinking you were having some orange sherbet and you like took a, a yeah. bite of ice cream and you're like, why does this taste like cheese? <laughs> this is actually, okay, so we'll add it. We'll, we'll show the picture in double tap. Let's okay. add this in double tap. I see that it's it's like on their official Instagram page. Like it's not, it's a limited edition. If you are um, on the look for trying this out, it came out today. So I don't know where you can find it, but it comes out today. I'm not. I'm not wasting my money on that. That's like that. That's like a walking, like a stomach ache, and have a bathroom. It's a nearby. lot of dairy, <laughs> right? Have a bathroom very, very close nearby. Do not be the one driving your car trying to eat that. No. What What toppings would you put? I wouldn't eat that. On. Like I'm not a big. Yeah, but cheese. let's pretend like you did. No bacon bits. That's the only thing. Bacon I can bits. Think of. That's it. Some little bacon, bacon bits. Sprinkles. So yeah. That's no. All. Here's my thing. Is it just, is it flavored? Is it, will it taste like macaroni and cheese? Or is it really just ice cream that wants you to look like macaroni and cheese and it's just probably like food coloring? Because if it's, is it, if it, like, is it just vanilla ice cream? Right. With, and it's just, it just I looks like it. I think it has it. to taste like it. I don't know. It says flavored French ice cream, limited edition. See, French, that makes me like, is it French vanilla? We'll have to do some more research, and we'll we'll we will get into it, and we'll dive deeper into it. I'm Here happy I brought it up. News on Wednesday morning. If you didn't say it was macaroni and cheese day, then it hit me. I was like, oh my gosh, that was real. I just thought it was something fake. You know, people would just like Photoshop something into yeah. a picture. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's crazy. But one thing I did watch last night, I watched Team USA. You did watch it. I did watch Team okay. USA. It was an earlier game. I watched like most of the second half of it. I didn't watch the whole thing. I thought it was a late night game, but it was not on NBC. Um, they got the job done. It's it's hard to critique Team USA in a win because they the best thing you can say is that they just played basketball like they played a great offensive basketball where they actually ran some plays where they moved the ball around you they looked like a team and you could tell that they put a lot of focus on the defense side of things and it showed up and it's hard to be like oh what did they do perfectly it's just like this is what we thought it was going to look like and they just did what they were supposed to do that is the saddest statement i've ever heard like Team USA showed up and, well, they played basketball, so here we go. They won. I mean, I kept checking the score throughout the game, and that's concerning to me because I kept waiting for it to topple. Mm -hmm. And, like, Argentina's not good. Let's not pretend that this is an Argentina team right now that mm -hmm. Team USA should even flirt with losing to. So they had to win this game. Um, you come off two losses. You need a little confidence boost. I know there was a lot of talk about from Greg Popovich saying that, like, these guys are tired and they're out. They're not conditioned. Go run sprints every day until Tokyo. Like, I, well, I, win, lose, whatever. But they should be tired. Like, that, that's like that's that where goes my, off the season. That's right. Right. That's my. That's where it goes to. Like for these guys, their mentality. I don't know where they hold. I do think they hold Tokyo and the Olympics at a very, very high level in their lives, because or else they would not have agreed to be on Team USA. But they should be tired. A lot of these guys, you know, played in the playoffs where, yeah, you probably had a, some, a couple weeks off. And let's be let's be real. If we had some time off, what am I doing for two or three weeks? Just you will not. Out. No one will see me, hear me, a treadmill, elliptical, whatever they do. You won't even be, be there. But now is the time to like. That's why these exhibition games are super important. And now is the time to get those their legs going. And we knew they were tired. We knew they were tired on Saturday. We saw them. We're like, oh man. We, I said, you know, they're in Vegas, but they're they're tired. <laughs> These dudes got knocked out in the first round slash didn't make it to the playoffs at all. Zach Levine, Bradley yes. Bill, Dane Lillard. Zach Levine was hurt. Bradley Bill they they should be in. tired. They, that's not a fair or valid excuse for going out there and losing to Nigeria and Australia the way that they did. They didn't look tired they look just bad in those games they were but like we're not saying it's an overall excuse it's just the facts like well, i think when someone tells you something like they're, they're tired as people why do we always want to say they shouldn't be though like they said they are i'm tired today and i shouldn't be i shouldn't be i got eight hours of sleep last night oh. well, let me tell you i still am I'm so jealous like, i got I like am. a cool three to four we're watching some new dogs and it was a late night. You I, did you did you hook up with my friend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. That's on uh, later this month. Oh, good. Yeah, the dog's gonna stay at our place. Okay. We're really excited about it. But she yeah. loves that dog, so I don't know anything about the dog. I hope it's Great. really good. If it's no not, pressure. do not, don't even blame <laughs> me for it. I'm putting it right back to you, and I'm gonna bring the. Oh, you'll be gone. Never mind. I was gonna say I will bring the dog in studio and well, I, allow let you me, to let watch. Me, the let's dog. be very serious. The net, the three weeks that I'm gone, y'all better be tired. I'm gonna be Jessica exhausting. and CJ. 
I'm going to be up every night until, how, how late are you on? 4 a.m.? 4 a.m. Yeah, so 3 a.m. our time. <laughs> Get that nice no, little 4 nap. No, 4 a.m. time, 5 a.m. my That's night. what time I wake oh. up anyway. I'm not going to be tired at all, okay. baby. No, you're not going to sleep at all. Let's that's, talk that's the about point, the CJ. parameters here. You're not we, going to sleep. Well, it's time to wake up. Can we You're going to be it? watching me the whole entire time. <laughs> Wait, you don't come on till what time? 10 p.m. Oh, you come on 10 to 4? Yes. Oh, I thought so you you're came not, on at 4. So y'all better, oh, yeah, can do that? Y'all better look um, like Team USA did on, on Saturday oh, against Nigeria. Um, Ms. <laughs> Megan, um, can we tape it? Like, nope. Can we set some rules here? Nope. What if we tap in? Like, Because like, what if I fall asleep to you? Nope. Come on. It's not that weird. weird. It's just having TV on. I fall asleep to sports <laughs> people all the time. They're on Sports true. Center, fall asleep, wake up to some weird replays strange. in the middle of the night. I don't know. I don't know. But CNBC, there's going to be no replays because the middle of the night is you. Like, mm -hmm. there's no infomercials. There's just megamercials. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you know, I think that I, I expect you guys to stay up the whole entire time. You have enough. Should, you have I enough. Should settle you can get on, three, like, hours of, hours. <laughs> three hours of sleep. That's, that's good enough. Do the show, and then you sleep the same sleeping hours that I so sleep. So we're all on the same schedule right. so that we feel your pain exactly. when you return yes. and have to uh, switch And then that over. shows that we're actually all one family. They always say when wow. you get around your people that y'all Sync go, up your schedules, right. so keep just everything saying, together. Everything's synced. All right, CJ, let me know how that's going to go for you, Mr. It'll be fine. In bed by 6 p.m. It'll be fine. If I, if wake I'm up in, in the bed, middle. Yeah, I wake tag up at, team yes. it. Yes. <laughs> tag, tag team it. And then take, tag take tag notes tag and, and send those notes to the other one. And Megan's like, what did I talk about today? And we're like, well, from the hours of. Yeah. <laughs> Who won table one. tennis? Okay. Is that like your primary sport? <laughs> I don't know why I just think about table tennis You've all the time. You've said it multiple times, but I'm really into it. I think it. because when I, when I wrote down all the sports that's coming on, like on CNBC, table tennis was the first one I wrote down. So whenever people ask me, table tennis comes up first in my head. Table tennis is ping pong, correct? I mean... I'm, I'm sorry. Let I me feel class as if it like up. we should. Right. I feel like we should not call it that. It's table, table tennis. tennis. But it, I will say that if you were to the eye, off first sight and first glance, it looks just like ping pong. Mm, but then it has that little special different something, rules, something right. that elevates it to the next level. To it, but it has that Does perception. Team USA, do you know who's like predicted to be a top table tennis? I do not. Are they, do they have better odds than the Team USA basketball team? We might need to settle back on some Yar, sort of team I'm not sport. pressing the Team USA panic I know button. Not. I know, and that's good because you have to be like the spokesperson yeah, for CJ's the Olympics. Yeah, CJ's sitting on the panic point. button. He's oh, yeah. Like, oh, no. My foot CJ, is firmly CJ entrenched. CJ pressed it on, and walked yeah, away. No, it's, <laughs> his it's legs time. are crossed sitting it's there. It's got his time cup, time red cup. Uh, the difference in ping pong and table tennis is how good you are. If you play in the really? garage, you're a ping pong player. <laughs> if you play competitively, you're a table tennis player. On why I'm still not, even after drilling Argentina, I'm still not off of the panic button. That bench did not look well. They did not play well. The uh, bitches never looked well. And, and, and that there is the issue to me. The so when, never if, well. if you send, it's a third string guy. When you send Kevin Durant, when you send Draymond Green, when you send Dame Lillard to the bench like we saw against uh, Australia a couple of games ago, they had a 10-point lead. Those guys go to the bench, start in the fourth quarter. That lead is evaporated, and they're at a deficit, right? So we can't, we can't play Kevin Love. I, I know Garland. Yeah, a lot of playing time yeah, yesterday. Yeah, no, and that's the issue. Like, <laughs> and we look, can't, but that, we but can't they, play. When he play, we lost. They, ha they, they, they had a big lead, so Kevin Love did get a lot of playing time. But he Kevin Love, well. though, when Kevin Love was in, was out there, even like even towards the end of the fourth quarter, I thought to myself, how does Kevin Love, Love feel? And this is no disrespect, yes. no disrespect to any of the players, but Kevin Love was out there with, like, John Jenkins. And I was like, John Jenkins is on this, on this like, team? Okay. Another one of those. You know, former Vanderbilt player. I was like, I don't even know what team he plays for in, in, in the league. Mm -hmm. But I was like, Kevin Love had to play the whole entire time. I was like... Is Kevin Love like a little like upset about this right now? He's I would just be. Happy I'd be, be a little. Here. I'll be a little bit mad. He won't be mad if he gets a a gold medal. Like you no, know, you're right. That's and I figured out what they do well though. Okay. That the pick and roll, right? You got all those dudes who do the same thing that we complained about the past two games. But in a pick and roll situation, how do you guard Bradley Bill or Dane Lillard coming off a mm -hmm. of pick and roll? If you get somebody who can set a good pick, Draymond does. Mm -hmm. Bam can also. So if Dre if Damian is coming off a of pick. That at the top of the key that Draymond sets and Kevin Durant is to his left and Bradley Bill is to his right and Jason Tatum is in the corner, like you can't help off of that. So this team is going to have to get after it in half court sets. There's going to have to be a lot of pick and rolls. One, two, switching is great. Like you've got bigs who are athletic enough and Draymond Green and, and Bam to switch. The issue then becomes once that switch happens, who's guarding the big? You can't leave. Dane Lillard or Zach Levine guarding like a, a Mark Gasol or Pal Gasol, Rudy Gobert rolling to the rim. So while it's great having those athletic bigs, you've got to figure out a way to 
guard people without having to switch so often. But it's the I'm still panicked. I am I'm frazzled over here, but there's still time, like you say, man. Frazzled. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's frazzled. Still, they have some games this weekend, and I'm I'm excited to see that. And I'm excited, I'm excited to see Team USA. Don't they get, don't the they get Australia two. again? They get Australia again? No, I thought they Either. have. Yeah, they get Australia Friday. I thought, if I, I'm I not thought mistaken. it was different teams. No, yeah, I didn't uh-huh. think there was crossover. No, they get they get Australia again, and I do believe they get Nigeria again too. Uh, well, t- I'm excited to see Team USA, the women. I know that they'll, they'll, we'll see them tonight with the All-Star, but I'm happy. I'm excited to see them in the dynamic when they get to play some ex- exhibition games over the weekend as well. So a lot of things, a lot of exciting things. I did not watch the MLB All-Star game. so You know what? I watched a minute. A minute? Like seven minutes, okay. maybe, perhaps. I will say, as, as the casualist of casual baseball fans, I'm actually kind of interested in baseball right now, and it's because there's some really good – personalities Mm -hmm. and players that I'm interested in. Like Vlad Guerra Jr. was named MVP last night. He crushed a uh, 468-foot home run, which was the longest home run in an All-Star game in a decade. And he became the first father-son duo to hit home runs in the All-Star games, along with the Bonds and Griffey families. Love him. Love Tatis. Uh, Shohei Otani obviously has had a heck of a week a heck of a season so far he was the game-winning pitcher last night he only pitched an inning but still gets the win and the fact that he also batted leadoff participated Mm -hmm. in the home run derby um just so much excitement around him and around you know some international players within the game you have just young rising stars that make me interested in following baseball a little bit i'm Mm -hmm. not i'm not ready to dive in and just turn on baseball games on any given night at this point but i at least find them fun Mm -hmm. which i haven't but i haven't really said that about baseball in a second and part of that's on me because i've just been really detached with it if Mm -hmm. you're flipping through the channels and nothing's on well flipping through the channels we don't do that anymore but let's pretend we're flipping through channels and nothing is on and you see tatis is at the plate you're gonna stop yeah like that that's that's what baseball has going for it right now i'm not sure that they've had this many stars in a really really long time this many fun vibrant players and that different. you want to watch all and different, different which is right what you makes still entertain you still mike trout is injured but you still have the trouts you still have bryce harper you still have justin verlander doing his thing that'll make you stop and say okay let me tune in and see what's going on but now with the the influx of young stars like you brought up jessica it, it feels like baseball is more fun than it's been in a really long time i hope they capitalize on it they won't. too i know they, they absolutely won't and that's the thing i think about this entire all-star experience from the home run derby to the game last night is it allowed for there to just be straight fun and it hasn't been the best of times in baseball between the whole sticky substance situation and you have one of your that's stars accused watch, of though. sexual harassment <laughs> the sticky that's not that, fun. That's part no not, fun on that but the sticky substance I, it's been fun to watch them um address yes. pictures of like hey we went to the giants game in san francisco and it was fun to watch in real time it's like oh he's mm-hmm. walking off oh there goes his belt and it's yes. just it's a very odd new world <laughs> it is <laughs> well so you're not going to be a, a full baseball fan yet but that's that's no, fine that's no well I mean, there was there's was a lot of stuff on last night so like i said we, you have to study table tennis so yeah. that takes a little bit of a priority <laughs> right now i followed along on on taylor davis who, who we've had on the yeah. show she's now with the royals i followed along on her snapchat I and mean, her her in her instagram story so she it made it look like it was a lot of fun the, the purple carpet that they all walked and seen some of the different fashion games and what they what they wore so i followed along on instagram which is that's kind of where I'm like I like that version of baseball that, fan. That's where I'm at. Now, one thing that I am going to follow along today is the WNBA yep. All Star Game that's going down in Vegas. So coming up, we're going to have Brooke Weisbrod join us to talk about it, preview what she's looking forward to the most. We'll have all that and more coming up after the break. Chris Stapleton's All American Roadshow. Friday, December 3rd at FedEx Forum with special guests, the Marcus King Band and Yola Take a ride out in the country. on sale now. Buy tickets at LiveNation.com or the FedEx Forum box office. Chris Stapleton's All-American Roadshow. Represent Every Day, presented by Delta Dental of Tennessee, is an incentive-based program focused on keeping youth 
K through sixth grade engaged in school in order to combat truancy. In partnership with Shelby County Schools and with the help of Delta Dental of Tennessee, the Grizzlies are focused on reducing chronic absenteeism among the most impacted schools in the Mid-South. Students in the program have the opportunity to win fun and unique prizes by going to school every day and being engaged in the classroom. For more information on the program, visit grizzlies.com slash community slash education today. Have gold? Bring it to King. Grab everything you'll never wear again. King will buy all your gold jewelry or trade it for new jewelry and get 20% more. Have gemstones or diamonds you don't want to sell, sentimental items passed down to you. King can use your gems or diamonds and create a new work of art designed with your own taste and style. Trade in your gold, let King design something that's all yours or sell us your gold. There's no better time than now during gold buying and custom design days at King Furs and Fine Jewelry in Laurelwood where custom design is our specialty. Ashley Home Store is proud to call Memphis home. We believe your personal style makes your house into a home. Discover incredible styles, selection, and quality at a price to fit any budget. Ashley Home Store has just the looks and options you need. Explore totally different styles and trends all in one place. Finding the perfect furniture, mattresses, and home decor makes it easy for you to create a home you love to live in. Only at America's number one furniture and mattress store. Ashley Home Store, proud partner of the Memphis Grizzlies. Driven to be the best, it's in the DNA of every Olympic and Paralympic athlete and in every new Toyota. Like the best-selling car, Toyota Camry, and the stylishly affordable Corolla. Now get $750 customer cash on a new 21 Camry or $1,000 on any new 21 Corolla. Or choose low 1.9% APR financing on Camry or Corolla. With approved credit through TFS, excludes Camry TRD. For complete details, go to buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Alrighty, welcome back to Rise and Grind. We're a few minutes early, but we might as well get straight to it. The WNBA All-Star Game is going down tonight. And to help us preview it all, we got our girl, Brooke. Hey, girlfriend. Oh, she looks good. Oh, she's always just like, always. Good morning. I'm on my way to the pool today. So I thought I would like, rep, rep a little Kobe. You know, I need some sun. But I mean, I'm not covering ping pong and celebrating French <laughs> Friday like some of us out here. But <laughs> I'm do it. Brooke, every day is French Friday. Like, you have to celebrate French Friday every single day. Yeah. One, one day is more important than others, but in general, it's a <laughs> everlasting holiday. Sorry, I will true. say, we were talking about the mac and cheese. Would you eat mac and cheese ice cream? Oh, yeah. no. I, I'm not even a huge mac and cheese lover. Like, that's not my thing. That that's, that makes me want to vomit. Like, I, <laughs> who's doing that? Craft. Craft. Today's National Mac and Cheese Day, and there's only a limited amount of ice cream that you can buy, but you can buy macaroni and cheese ice cream. I don't know who's out for that. Not, for us. not us. No. Couldn't no. be us. No, but that what will we not are be our, I was going to say, not be. our pregame meal for tonight's WNBA All-Star Game. And I hope no game. WNBA player is eating that oh, tonight God. because tonight <laughs> is a big game. It's, it's a very competitive All-Star uh, game because it's not just typical East versus West, but it's Team USA versus Team WNBA. And you're taking on the best of the best in the, in the WNBA. And there's so much that you can just take just from that. But when, when you think about this matchup and how this is laid out, what excites you the most? Uh, you hit it right on the head. Like that's what I love about it is you you have the all stars and the Olympic team. So you're literally talking about the best and then the best of those best that's <laughs> going to be representing our country. So, I mean, I just I love the competitive nature of it. Obviously, we don't want you know anybody to get hurt. I'm sure we're going to have a ton of fun. But I just I love that it's it's competitive. Yes, but like I've heard Courtney Vandersloot talking about it, Candace Parker talking about it. Everybody's just like really happy to enjoy each other's company. And to me, like the growth of the game has just exploded so much. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the ratings are and seeing what these ladies bring, not only to the court, but what they're wearing to the court. I mean, it's Vegas, it's like 150 degrees there. So, I mean, I'm, I'm just glad honestly that I'm not there. I'm sitting right here, gonna represent it from here because heat's not my thing, but I just, the talent and the star power and I mean, we're going to see dunking tonight. Like, we're going to see great moves that people, like, can really honor the game and be like, wow, okay, the women's game really does have it going on. Yeah, and I think, 
like you said, the profiles just continue to rise for the stars of the game, for the rising stars in the game. And you mentioned the fashion side of it. We have seen WNBA players rock it all season long. Um, some amazing looks. Is there anyone that you're particularly excited about seeing tonight on what they wear, who you think might be the best dressed? I know it's all about the game, but like you got that on the side too. I mean, that's a game within a game, right? I mean, now that we're seeing more promotions and sponsorships head their way. Um, and yes, Jess, absolutely. So uh, I was really impressed with Skylar Diggins showing up uh, the other day to her game, carrying a car seat. Like, she brought the mommy swag. I think that's a whole new thing. Yes, I just, I love this photo right here. Um, so I think she's going to represent from Team USA. And then the all-star roster has all-star fashion, right? You got Courtney Williams who always just rocks really cool hair, earrings, style, drip, everything. Satu Sabali, who's just got a, just mm -hmm. an amazing sense of style. Like we saw her during the draft, just such great, you know, even just colors in her background. And I know she's gonna bring it. Um, Benijah Laney, what she wore at the ESPYs lets me know she's just stepped her game up big time. Uh, Liz Cambage doesn't usually like to wear a whole lot of clothes, so we'll see what she will bring to the table. Like I said, it's going to be like 117 there. Um, so we don't know. Best I... dress. Uh, I'm going to give it to... I'm going to go Satu. I feel like Satu is going to bring it tonight. Yeah, I agree. For those, like, Satu is an amazing follow on yeah. Instagram. Um, she always brings it, even when she was still playing overseas. And I was like, oh, I cannot wait for her to get to get back into playing in the WNBA because I'm, like, waiting for her to see with her fits. But between Asia and Liz, you, you mean, you said it best. Like, these, these young ladies, they bring it, and it's going to be so exciting. I'm excited for the arrival videos because a lot of these ladies do put a lot into their fashion game, and they're, and they're very – strategic with their fashion you can tell there's always like some message that, that they're trying to say i know the wnba came out with the like wnba vest too that came out last week that that, that just dropped and those look really cool um so all of that's super exciting and also is the three-point contest do you think she's going to do it again for the third time in a row i i hope so because ali quigley is going to go down as is possibly the best three-point shooter the wnba has ever seen and she's got her boo, her wife, Courtney Vandersloot, right there to cheer her on beside her. So I think, like, the star power is there for, for Ali Quigley. And she's not even been a starter, like a regular starter this year for the Sky. Uh, Kalia Copper, who is one of three Chicago Sky members on the All-Star <laughs> team, so we'll throw that out there. Um, Kalia's been uh, starting for Ali, but literally every time Ali gets in, she's a guaranteed bucket um she really helped spark the comeback that was almost a win um the other night against the washington mystics but i mean this is this is perfection like this is i don't want to compare her to steph curry because she is her own woman and we don't need to be compared to the women's game to the men's game ali quigley is such a pure shooter and she's just a good person so i would love to see her take home the title again you see k mac like oh man look she sees it in her face she just knows ali's gonna take it home well, speaking of the Chicago Sky and, and one of those teammates, Candace Parker, there's a lot of speculation this morning. I know we're going to find out who is on the cover of NBA 2K22. And yesterday, NBA 2K tweeted out this video. And there is uh -oh. some excitement that Candace Parker could be on the cover. What would that mean if that is how this plays out here later today? Oh, breaking news. I didn't I didn't hadn't seen that yet. So Jess, you just got me hella yes. excited right you now. You can you can um, thank CJ. <laughs> oh, thank CJ. Good no. board, man. <laughs> My man. Um that would mean that would mean a lot. You know, Candace, we all know that there's been missed opportunities for Candace Parker, right? Um that's that's never been a secret. And so I think to to honor her in that way, to let her know, you know, hey, we appreciate you coming back to your hometown, trying to win one for this guy. And, you know, Candace Parker has, like, I, I didn't, I never really knew this about her until I started kind of listening to some internal videos of her in the huddle. She's such a motivator. You know, there was a game earlier this season where they were struggling, and she got into the huddle, and she just said, hey, I love watching you guys play. I love watching you guys fight. Let's go out here and, you know, do this, this, and this. It wasn't like, you know, you guys suck, do better, come on. You know, it wasn't that kind of demanding. She's such an inspirational person. She's such a great teammate. And I mean, to be on the cover of NBA 2K is like, that's, that's iconic. You know, not many people can, can say that about themselves. I would, uh, I would love to see that. Like you might even get me somewhat interested in video games. <laughs> I, I mean, 
Listen, I grew up on Atari, Nintendo, and Sega Genesis, and after that, I was like, nah, I'm good. But that might be, that might be, spark my interest again. And since we're talking about Candace Parker, you mentioned just like some of the missed opportunities that Candace did not get. When you think about this all-star game, a lot of, a lot of the players that are going to be on team WNBA have that mentality a little bit when it's, when it comes to not making the team USA roster. If you were one of those players on Team WNBA, does that add a little extra oomph to tonight's All-Star game? Oh, man, no doubt. Like, you think about, you know, maybe like Arike, Candice, mm -hmm. uh, Courtney Vandersloot, Courtney Williams. You're going to see... You're going to see those moments of when they're lining up across the way with, you know, like Ariel Atkins, Sue Bird. Like, that's when you're going to see them go at it. And, and you know, don't get me wrong. Like, yes, it is a an all-star game. But these people, these ladies are the most competitive people in the world. So, yeah, you're going to see that little edge to, like, plant that seed. Like, hey, Gino. Hey, Don. <laughs> I want to remember my name in a couple of years. All right. Remember this moment when I took your girl to school? I'd like to be wearing the Team USA uniform in four years, please. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's like the usual friendly, fun, all-star mm -hmm. game vibes with a little extra gas, just a mm -hmm. little extra that makes it more fun to watch. Brooke, I realized I'm um, looking at your Coastal Carolina jersey behind you. We haven't spoken to you since college athletes got the opportunity to start making a little money. And I'm just curious, if you were back in school and you had a chance to make some money on name, image, and likeness, is there one brand or company or anything that you would have been like, this is what I want. This is how I want to do it. Um, well, I mean, I grew up um, idolizing Nike, wanting to make, I wanted to, to make commercials either for Nike or, or Gatorade. So those would kind of be the two most obvious. I was in Myrtle Beach. So what you have there are golf courses. No, thanks. <laughs> All you can eat food buffets, maybe, and strip clubs. And that was probably a no no. <laughs> <laughs> you probably have to get really creative down there. Like we weren't really known for, for much else, but like partying back then. So um, there might be a lot of like alcohol brands. I'd be uh, interested after I turned 21, I guess. But man, uh, Coastal was, was just more known for, for partying. So we probably had to keep that low key. I was going to say now after the football season, like someone could get a mullet deal. Like mm -hmm. some hair salon oh, could do totally. special mullets. Yeah. Yes. Super clips. <laughs> Super clips. You yeah. can have a deal with yeah. that. Brooke, you've had a busy couple of weeks. You've been going to a couple of WNBA games that we posted about. You were in Brooklyn. You got a chance to see the New York Liberty play. You also went got a chance to see the Chicago Sky play. What has it been like uh, taking on watching some of these WNBA games live in action? And then I see you've been mixing and mingling with some of the best of the best around the industry. Oh, it's so cool. I mean, to see to see Ari's growth um, and, and just her impact in the WNBA and, and what she's created with Highlighter, like that's that is just such a movement. So I, I was so happy to link up with her and, and Dijanae there and Chloe from Overtime. Um, yeah, being in being in Barclays to, to watch the Liberty game, it was cool. Like the crowd, the crowd, it's not at full capacity yet there, but you could literally hear the fans giving it to the refs in a New York style that, you know, is only possible in New York. So I love that. Um, I can't really say much more else, but I was also there to shoot my first commercial, uh, which has been super fun. Yes, uh, a little dabbling in the acting world, I guess. Um, but I'm, I'm down for that. Um, and then Saturday night was awesome because we had also the uh, Nike uh, big, uh, I'm going to forget the name now. Anyways, it's one of their bigger tournaments that they have here and there's over 10,000 high school girls that are here playing AAU basketball. So all of that was, all that energy carried over right next door from McCormick Place into Wintrust Arena. And it was the loudest I have heard that place, you know, since being there two years ago when we, when we had a packed house. So that was so, so exciting. Unfortunately, they didn't get the win against the Mystics, but like just feeling that energy again, I, I literally have chills right now thinking about it. It was awesome. I love how just the casual mm -hmm. shot my first commercial. Yeah. Well, we can't, wait to see <laughs> it. can't talk we'll about keep, it. Can't talk about open. it though. But I will say you did mention Ari and I mean, truly so instrumental in the growing of the WNBA is so important and it mm -hmm. is and making all of us talk about it more because it deserves to be talked about more and to have the WNBA all-star game and, and the season going so well for so many teams thus far. It's awesome. And we so appreciate you always keeping us in the loop. Mm -hmm. You're like our little WNBA insider. Yeah. And uh, well, you for, help us. But before we think about it, Brooke, Brooke, oh. who do you got? Like, who's your pick? Is it team USA, team WNBA? What do you think is going to be the winners tonight? 
I'm going Team WNBA. Ooh. I'm going, I guess, I guess, the underdogs. I mean, if we can even call them that. Um, as long as we see one or two dunks, some great trash talk, a little like finger roll, next to step back three. Um, but really, the winners are all the ladies as long as they bring the fashion. Let's be real. Mm-hmm. Deal. Deal. It's all going down tonight, 6 o'clock Central Time, 7 Eastern Time on ESPN. You can watch the WNBA All-Star Game. And Brooke has got you all set and ready for what you need to look out for and watch for. Brooke, like always, we appreciate the time. And thanks for helping us out. Talk about the WNBA. Enjoy the pool. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Thank you. I'll see you. All right. Bye, Brooke. All right. Coming up, we're going to have D'Angelo Williams join us. It is Wednesday. And you never know what D'Angelo Williams is going to be talking about. So we shall see. We'll be right back. Have gold? Bring it to King. Grab everything you'll never wear again. King will buy all your gold jewelry or trade it for new jewelry and get 20% more. Have gemstones or diamonds you don't want to sell, sentimental items passed down to you. King can use your gems or diamonds and create a new work of art designed with your own taste and style. Trade in your gold, let King design something that's all yours, or sell us your gold. There's no better time than now, during gold buying and custom design days at King Furs and Fine Jewelry in Laurelwood, where custom design is our specialty. The best NBA slash rap slash music collab. There's a long history of this in the NBA. Jason Kidd, Gary Payton, Allen Iverson, Ron Artest, Chris Webber, Kobe, Jack, Damian Lillard. Dame Dalla, Lou Williams, Lonzo Ball. I feel like that's in the future for the Grizzlies. It should be, right? We should get like John Jaren to maybe we should do a song together. Join Lang Whitaker and me, Kelsey Ray Johnson, every Thursday as we debate the hottest topics in the NBA. I am HO on GrindCityMedia.com, YouTube, and our social channels. WinBet is live in Tennessee and bringing you the action of real money sports betting right in the palm of your hand. Now you can get in on the action with all of your favorite teams across NBA, NFL, NHL, MLB, MLS, and more. Don't forget to take advantage of the generous promos, great odds, and unique parlays available in Tennessee on the WinBet app. Head to the App Store to download the WinBet app and sign up today. First-time bettors will receive a risk-free sports bet of up to $500. Terms and conditions apply for all promotion. Get the details at winbet.com. W-Y-N-N-B-E-T.com. Must be 21 or older and present in Tennessee. Gambling problem? Call the Tennessee Red Line, 1-800-889-9789. So you know how part of the reason they did the possession arrow is because referees can't throw a ball six feet in the air right. straight up. Now we have drone technology. <laughs> so we put the ball on a drone. On a drone. Fly it over the thing. Have the drone sponsored. <laughs> have it spo- you sponsored. You put a camera up there. Put a yeah. sponsor on it. Hey, guys, it's time for the Mountain Dew drone jump ball. Thing flies out there. Perfect every time. <laughs> Get your sports betting picks and trends with Lang Whitaker and Rob Fisher, the odds couple. everybody it is wednesday which means it is time to talk to d'angelo williams and as always we have no idea what we're going to talk to him about but d'angelo how's it going i'm doing pretty good this is super dope this is super dope your background are you at a school is this your house where are you no this is this is this is the kids playroom but oh my gosh she got me a ring light, so I literally oh. could like do it anywhere now. <laughs> it's crazy. First of all, this is like your kid's playroom. Yes, yes. It's it's the entire room is. Is I that Doctor could... Seuss? It's, it is. Yeah, it's that's Doctor Seuss. This entire room is painted in Doctor Seuss. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm just my mind is going back to the fence. <laughs> and I'm not trying to like go all the way back because I'm sure we have some new <laughs> listeners who are Episode probably one. trying to figure out like what the fence. You complained about this fence and how much things were going to cost. And we realized it's like $225. Yes. You have murals in your house of yourself, of Dr. Seuss. Like now I'm starting to think like, you know, D'Angelo, when it comes to like money or anything you complain about else, I'm not on your side. I can't help you out anymore. Like I'm just not there with you. Okay. So I, I, I had a sit down conversation with myself. I didn't answer <laughs> back. So I'm not crazy. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I had a sit down conversation with myself. And when I came out of that conversation, this is what I found out about myself. There's certain things that uh, I dislike. Like I don't like putting money in the things that I don't own 
But when you own something, then you want to put money into it because it in turn raises the value later. Um, so with that being said, the fence, I, I don't, I don't know what I was saying. <laughs> I think does, doesn't the fence like add value to your house if you were ever to sell it? You know, that, that's usually I always watch house hunters like, oh, it doesn't have a fence. Oh, you can get that. Well, how much extra will that? But be? if I if I remember correctly, Megan, that as I come to D'Angelo's defense, but it wasn't his tree. It was the neighbor's no, tree. It wasn't, it wasn't D'Angelo's exactly. fault. The fence went down. It was the neighbor's fault that his tree fell on D'Angelo's fence. So the neighbor should have paid, and D'Angelo was was right. No matter how much mm-hmm. money he has, he was right. Just like the baby, that, that, little baby, that, that, whichever one of those babies was like, hey, kid, how much for all of that ice cream or all that candy? And they told him $200, and he gave them two because there was no way that candy cost $200. Sometimes it's just the principle behind it, Megan. No. And, and, and I'm no. glad that you brought that up, CJ, because I, I, I have to talk about this. And uh, I didn't even know that we was going in this direction until I found out we was going in this direction. Oh, gosh. Uh, should I, should I, should I, should I yeah. Wednesday. Should I be concerned? Should I have not said anything no, at all? No. I should have just sat here. No. no, no, not at all. Not at all. This, this is the question that I have for you guys. As a celebrity of any kind, A, B, D, C, or E lister, when you go out into public, whether it be a restaurant or whatever, mm-hmm. do you think that celebrities that are worth millions and millions of dollars should spend more money on things that other people don't like? Hey, t- we need you to tip more. You got all that money, you can tip more than 20%. Uh, you know, that candy, that candy, you should have bought that candy for $200. You got all that money. It doesn't matter that the kid, you know, it don't cost them $10. You know, are you one of those people where you feel that if you're a millionaire or a billionaire, the cost of something shouldn't matter to you. You should live your best life. I don't think so. I don't think so. But I like, first of all, have your own boundaries and your own limits and don't just buy something for the sake of buying something. But Mm -hmm. if I was incredibly rich and money wasn't an issue ever and I saw a kid selling a candy bar or a lemonade stand or something, I would feel inclined to help them out. I'm not. I don't need to like give them a thousand dollars, but mm-hmm. I would pay for the candy bar, or I'd pay you, for the you, lemonade. You would pay the two hundred dollars. You just shoot. Maybe not. Maybe not the two hundred. I would two hundred dollars. But like, no. if the candy is like, let's say it's a dollar, and I have a twenty. Hey, here's a twenty. Keep yes. you know, no, no, I'm keep good. The I'm, I'm keep the change. Like you know, that can make someone's whole day. But that's if, if taking it back to that video. That's not what happened in the video. For those who of you no, who missed it, not. baby rolls up with one of the babies rolls up on two kids selling gushers and some other fruit snack. And he's like, okay, how much for the box? And the kid says $200. He's like, wait, how much are you selling them for? The kid was trying to hustle baby, right? And so yeah. if, you're, if you're getting hustled, if you feel like you're about to be swindled, then, yeah, I get, like, no, nah, you can't mm-hmm. hustle a hustler. I get that. If I was rolling up, we see it all the time. Well, I see it all the time on my drives to and fro. There are kids on corners at various intersections hustling, selling water, Gatorade, chips, whatever, for a set price. And if I rolled up and I had a bunch of money, I'll be like, yo, give me one, here's 100, and just leave it at that. I wouldn't ask any questions. But if you're trying to hustle me, if you're like, if I'm like, here's 100, you're like, no, 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 it's $200. No, give me my money back, dog. Don't worry about it. I ain't even thirsty. D'Angelo, do you feel pressure when you go out to eat or when you, especially when people like recognize you and notice you at, at restaurants or nice restaurants, do you feel like you have to not overspend, but like probably get a little bit more yeah. food or order a lot more? No, no, not at all. I, I always have a problem with the tipping aspect and the reason why I always get a, a bad rap on the tipping thing is because if I have to ask you for water, if I have to ask you for anything uh, at a restaurant uh, as it relates to you being my waiter or waitress, then I don't think you're doing the job that you need to be doing. So are you worth 20%? No, it may knock you down to 10 to 15. Oh. But what I'm not going to do <laughs> Damn. is this is what, this, oh, goodness. This, this is, this is really what bothers me though. If my, but if you ask cost, like, Say what? If you ask, and let's say they're still very helpful, like, oh yes, of course. People are very understaffed right now. Yeah. They're working look, really look, hard. I'm, I'm telling, I'm telling you right now, Jessica, Megan, and CJ. If I'm in a restaurant and there's three people in this restaurant, it's me, mm-hmm. you, and another table, and I need some water. And I have to ask you a few times, and I know that y'all. This is not, this is not Walmart at 1 a.m. where it's 46 people in line and only one cashier. I'm talking about 
uh, where you walk into the restaurant and it's only you and another table and there's 16 people standing around that's working there, but don't nobody seem like they're here to work. I'm talking about those kind of establishments. Oh, tough scene. Do you tip hmm. your Uber drivers? I, I do not tip my Uber drivers unless they do something other than drive. Extraordinary. Like a great conversation. Yeah. Uh, if they if they run a real like if they actually step outside of what it is that they do, then hell yeah, I'm tipping my Uber driver. <laughs> I have a problem tipping Uber drivers too. So do Uber I. And I, I always drivers. sit in a weird space with it. The one now, like the price is already gone like have gone up. Yeah. You're already I'm already spending yes. like fifty sixty dollars just to go like ten miles. So I'm like, you're getting a good price. I'm not going to tip you. And as you mentioned, if we're just like literally just sitting there driving from point A to point B, you, I, get, I get out. Now, if, if I'm traveling, do you tip a cab driver? I'm very I hard with that too. To. Like it might be like it might be like two dollars. It used to be like keep the change because back in the day when you had to pay cab drivers mm-hmm. in cash, it's not that far away that that was a thing. So I would. And then some cab the drivers, they're not, they're, the they're, machine, they're, though. they're working for someone else sometimes. Right. Like they don't own, some, some don't own their cars. They don't own their uh, Uber and Lyft is like, that's your car. Like okay, Uber, so, Uber is so great with giving their drivers a lot, a lot more of the fee. But then I always think about it from another side hustle version or for some people, their primary hustle. But like when we do Rover, which is like Uber for dog sitting, do you get tipped? No, but occasionally if someone does tip us, Oh my gosh, we like run around the apartment. We're so excited. And it means so much because it means that like they thought we went above and beyond and they appreciate mm-hmm. it. Plus for us, I don't know how it works with Uber, but like Rover takes a percentage of your pay. So you're taxed out oh, they do. Uber on does Ro- the same thing. Rover. Uber okay. Does. So I would assume Uber does the same thing. But how and much so percentage you're not making I don't if we have like a forty dollar job, we get paid like thirty four dollars. Okay. That's, that's six bad. bucks. And yeah. when we're splitting everything fifty fifty, you know, that's but that's not bad. It out. It's not. It's not terrible. But when it adds up, is yeah. when you have a, say, you're watching a dog for like seven days, mm-hmm. and then it takes a pretty nice little chunk out of it. But anyway, I was just saying because literally, like, we'll run around the block. Like, we got a tip. I'm so excited. And I wonder if Uber drivers feel that way. So but you then, should tip then. I guess I, know, I don't have a service that like so, makes me feel. I've been meaning to ask people about <laughs> this because I never know what the right answer is, and mm-hmm. it's, and then it's like 15, 20, 25. So sometimes I'll do the. 15 i don't know well, I gotta, see, here's, I here's, 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 here's what here's what i think is funny and I, I, it's really weird uh because it's a it's a weird space when you you add those ride shares in uber and lyft and mm-hmm. stuff right and 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 i hate that i'm 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 drawing this comparison but let's just talk about this so back in the days like if you try to hail a cab in new york or whatever there's a there's a stereotype that said it you know, the cab drivers don't stop for black people because we don't tip. We're in an age where ride shares are available. And it seems like nobody's tipping. So why aren't they stopping now? I think it's I think it's different a little bit, but I get where you're going with it. I get where you're I get you where your brain is operating. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like it, it kind of transitioned from, you know, it was like, hey, you know, nobody tips, nobody tips, nobody tips. So now, literally, nobody tips because we're in a weird space now, right? Like, if I took a cab right now uh, from here to down the street, it may cost me $12. But if I took an Uber, it may cost me $18 or $22, depending on if the surge, if the uh, ride has surged or not, or something like mm-hmm. that. So now you're saying, look, I paid more to be loyal to the brand, so I'm not tipping versus, hey, I'm getting in that taxi cab. And like you said, Megan, sometimes they don't they don't own their own taxis. Like, are you asking questions when you get in this taxi? Because it's no, I just like know one of those people. No, I, you just no. You, but you know certain like there's there's in back in the day, especially yeah. with taxis, there was like there was companies, there was companies. Right. Some some did own their cars and said I have my own service. But you just like you just knew like that was that was more of a bigger thing back then. Whereas you that they worked for companies, big large like taxi service companies and so with uber you know that and lyft you know that like that that's something they're trying to do as a side hustle or maybe it's just something like i always get like, like a retired person who's like i just like to do this you know mm-hmm. it's something fun and i think that the one difference i think it is because with taxis you see the little ticker you yeah. see where like where you're at money wise uber you're just trying like you're just trying to go on a point a to point b and there's really no like there's no breakdown of why it costs the way the way it does with taxis you would see you know that if you get in with four people the number goes up yeah. and you start at a certain price and then you go up and sometimes sometimes okay. back in the day i would get out the car just let me out right here 
Like I've already gone. I've already gone over my, my budget. I'm I'm running the rest of the way. And now with Uber, here. you can't do that no. because you've already done it. So like, if you're stuck in traffic and you have a mile to go, and you're like, I'd rather walk. I'd get right. there sooner. Faster. But you already paid for it. So then, you can't oh gosh, that psychology. happened to me in Boston. That, when you're in those when you're in those mm -hmm. cities and you're stuck and you know that I can get there yes. faster if I just walk, but I've already uh, just paid. I, I would just there. I would just say, scrap it. It's a yeah. loss. I can get there faster. I'm yeah. walking because you know that there's something big happening, you know, the city. I've gotten stuck in a tunnel before. That is the That's worst gross. thing ever oh. because you can't get out. Yeah. And all, all, all they're saying is that on the radio or whatever, it's like, oh, it's, there's, some, there's some accident or something happened, and you're just sitting there. I hate getting stuck yes. in tunnels. It gives me Did so you have cell phone service? No. no. No cell phone service. You can't call anyone. You can't say, I'm going to be late for work. You can't do anything. You can't check in. Like, I had to go through a tunnel to get to the airport. You can't do anything, like, like even seeing, like, maybe if I check in or, like, you can't. You, at that point, you're just stuck. You are just stuck in that tunnel, and it's just you and the Uber driver. That's the oh worst. Oh, my gosh. That sucks. And, and Did you have I, a question I, for I us for the day? <laughs> say, say it again. Did you have a question for us for the day? I, I actually I don't. I mean oh, I, I, just I don't talking. at all. I missed you guys last week. Uh, I didn't have an opportunity to talk to you guys. I do have a serious question, but I don't know if y'all ready for it. Oh uh, gosh, how serious? Uh, well, <laughs> What's so the it's, it's one of these questions. I and and I, I I I'll tell you where it comes from. So I went last weekend. I went to the UFC fights. Uh, UFC two sixty four. Um, and Greg Hardy was fighting on the card. That's one of my really good friends. You know, he played at Briarcrest. Uh, I recruited him to Memphis. Well, mm -hmm. you know, he had got accused of some things in his career and, and such. Not only accused, I, I, I don't know if they was real, if they was false. I just know what he told me, right? So the question is, if you have a friend that's been accused of something, I don't understand why people don't understand that if that friend tell you like, hey, I didn't do it, and you riding with that friend, like, do you just cut them off and be like, oh, nah, uh, -uh. I can't deal with you, or do you support them? Because it's really we, it's a really weird space now in in society when one of your friends are accused of something, and you don't know if it's true or not, but you can only go based off of y'all friendship and y'all relationship on what he or she told you. So I, I guess the question is, is how do you, do you support or do you just cut yourself, do you cut your friends off because that's what society does? That's a tough question. That is. And I, I know it's a, it's a really tough question because you know, you know, like, you know what your friend is capable of doing. You think you, you would think you would know what they're capable of doing, right? So when they said that they didn't do something, do you say, ah, okay. All right, man, you know, I believe you. And then you ride with your friend or do you say, "Ooh, man, you know, I got a family, too, man. I can't mm -hmm. I can't. I, Yeah, man, I can't touch that. I think because since we're talking in a more general, I know I know there's a, yeah, just a, there general a specific okay, thing for general. you. Let's keep it very general. Yes. I think everyone yes. is very different. And the definition of support can be different. How you ride for someone, whether you believe them or not that can be uh, in a different lane. You don't have to like ride, ride for them, but it can be like, I can, I can show this person love. I can show them support. I can show them compassion. I can be there for them in certain ways. But I do think that looks different for everybody. And I think everyone struggles with that. Whether it's like we're, we're realizing, especially in this year, people have different belief systems. People have different political yeah. views and how we love others and how we support them can be in various ways and i do i know that we all will nitpick how others do that but i think everyone is going through that right now in these times especially in these last couple of years yeah and i think you can certainly admonish like reprehensible actions mm -hmm. even if it's a, a friend or a family member and say like i don't i don't stand by that um, but i'm going to support this person in whatever way i'm capable of doing and helping them work through you know, tough times and what that means looks different for everyone. And you kind of just have to take it on a case by case basis. But it really is, I think, again, larger picture from politics, from how people believe on various things in society. We're not like a monolith of people. We don't mm -hmm. all agree 100 percent on every single thing. So you have to figure out what you're OK with. And that's a different decision for every single person. And you don't want to enable people. So much of this yeah. is about that right there. So if you're if you're not trying to enable that person to continue to make bad decisions that end up affecting others around them, sometimes it, it that support 
isn't just, hey, let's hang out, let's go play dominoes, let's play spades, or get a drink or something like that. Sometimes it's sitting down with them and having that conversation like, yo, listen, I saw this. We, we've seen you do this, that, and the third. Why are you doing this? You've got to stop. We, we've got to get you some type of help to, to get you back right. It can't just be, okay, we're just going to turn the blind eye to so much, right? We, we turn the blind eye to it. Well, that's my so on and so forth. I'm going to love them unconditionally. Yes, you can love your parents. You can love your family members. You can love your friends unconditionally. But that support in, in loving them means you're going to help them grow and help them to become better if you're not willing to have those uncomfortable conversations with people in your life that you love and that you rock with then i i don't know if you truly love them and rock with them in that way because if you love them and then they love you you can have those conversations freely and you can challenge them in a way that people on the outside can't you can challenge uh, somebody with a an off viewpoint in a way that somebody on facebook or twitter or whatever other social media app can't so we need more of that happening in this world to, to so that we can continue to progress the right way. Yeah, and I think it's very challenging. I think some people forget that a lot of things happen behind closed doors. And yeah. so there's a lot of things that people do not see. And I know that being in the public figure, it's very different and very weird because you are scrutinized because you are a public figure and people want to have that sense that we want to know what you're doing, what you're thinking at all times. But I'm just a believer of like, I just pray and hope and that I hope that everyone's having these conversations behind closed doors with what you see all the time publicly is just not the end of the story that that's not all to the story and so that's what i big believe on like when i know we all we judge a lot and i try not to judge just because i don't believe something or i don't think someone should was right or wrong i know that people have families that's someone's daughter son and you know uncle brother sister and so i know that that's a dynamic that we all have to kind of just all think about all the time yeah, I uh, and and CJ going back to what you said, I totally agree with you 100. percent But I'm just going off of like none of the signs, none of it matches up to the person, but it's their word against the other person's word. So it's kind of where you got to use your moral dilemma, where you just, I mean, it puts you in a moral dilemma where you just like, ooh, I believe them, or no, I don't believe them. But and that's me. that's that's where the problem rides. What. We're different around different people. So who I am around Megan is different than who I am around Jessica. It's different than who I would be around you in a one-on-one -on -one right. situation. So I could be uh, a giant, lovable goofball here, but I could go home and be a terrible monster at home, right? So you can't yes, go off yes, of yes. what you know because, I, yes, I'm a lovable guy to you, but I might not be that for somebody else. Right. So it, you, you can't yeah. necessarily always use your own discernment because you're right around me. This person is, is wonderful. This person is a delight to have. But when that person goes home or when that person uh, goes to a bar, when that person does something else, like what are they? How do they behave? We, we turn these switches on and off all the time. So you can't necessarily use your discernment just because somebody is cool around you doesn't mean they're cool around everybody. Mm -hmm. I see. And that's where that's where I have the. And that's where the disconnect is right there, CJ. And that's what I have a problem with because I can only tell you about my relationship with this person. If you ask me, I can't tell you how he is to somebody else because once you close that door, I'm not, I'm not behind that door. And therein lies the problem. I, I know that there's a famous interview out there where the guy, uh, there was a guy that kidnapped a girl or something and they interviewed his neighbor. And he was like, I had ribs with that guy. I had no idea that he was that type of person but the guy only spoke, he was like dude he was such a nice guy and we're just like dude you know he's an animal how could you not see that but he can only speak from the friendship that he had with him not the friendship that he saw to other people because he didn't have that opportunity to see him interact with anybody else because it was maybe him walking over to his house every now and then you know because situationally you don't know how many times you come in contact with people that you call your friends to begin with yeah, I mean, you see it on an extreme level with every murder mystery 2020 dateline yes. and you have the interviews with someone and says, wow, I never would have imagined from this person. And sometimes you have a one off where you're like, oh, I knew something was up. But there are so many times where the way someone <laughs> presents themselves to society at large and to the people that they interact with daily, weekly, monthly, whatever, in such a different way. And I know, too, you know, even when it comes to relationships specifically like I've had a friend that I had no idea what was going on a close friend 
and people hide things because they don't feel safe yeah. or they feel insecure or they feel embarrassed or guilty or whatever, rightfully or wrongly so. And then next thing you know, something's been happening right under your nose for however long mm -hmm. and you just had no idea. Can I like change and so, flip so yeah. it something a little bit lighter? <laughs> yeah. Or Daniel, did you want to yeah. keep going? No, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. I would, was something that, something that came to me when you we were talking about this, you're saying that you went to UFC, you know, you went to Vegas. And I, you know, in my opinion, I think that we're like close family and friends. And the fact that you've traveled to Vegas to see a UFC fight, and we're just sitting <laughs> over here, talk to you every single week. And we said, D'Angelo, come to Memphis when you come, like come to studio. We would love to meet you. I, we have not met you in person. I've met him, but he doesn't know. <laughs> I've inter I've, I interviewed you like four times back in the oh. day. <laughs> I mean, is there a flight to Memphis coming up soon or something? Like, I'm just. I, I mean, I, it was, look, 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 look. It was cheaper to go to Vegas than it was to go mm. to Memphis. Okay. okay. Uh, Here we go with the money thing excuse, again. That's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. That's, that's my excuse. He says as he sits it. in front of a personalized Dr. Seuss wall in his child's playroom. Yes. Yeah. We've had this. Yeah. I. Um, I, I felt like it was fitting because, I mean, I grew up the Dr. Seuss. I mean, I granted, I know he's been in the news for some things that uh, some depictions of some certain stereotypes. But I mean, I he's talented. I mean, I I apologize if, you know, but I I'm Are here. Are you apologizing? I'm we're, a, I'm, I'm, we're not, I'm in we're Seuss not, land. We're, we're not, not making about, fun of yeah. you about the Dr. Seuss mural. We're just saying, like, why can't you book a flight? And when you did book a flight to Memphis, you didn't even tell nobody. Yeah. You told CJ. But still, we're Look, still waiting and, for you to come here. You go, you go to Vegas and probably spent money on, like, a crazy amount of ho on a hotel. And, like, you probably went out and did whatever people do in <laughs> Vegas. We're just saying, come here to Memphis. We're, no, we're not. I mean, the flight might be a little pricey. Let's, but, you know, Charlotte to Memphis is not, it's not bad. But that, I used to fly that all the time. It's not terrible. You can find a good flight. We have bottle service here. Man. Great. But I didn't there. get any bottle service. I went down there to support a friend. Okay? We are friends. And are I, we not friends? Are we not friends, D'Angelo? Yes, I, I, I'm supporting you guys virtually. See? Ha -ha. We, we I want to support. Can, I want to support in person. I, that's what I, I'm, I'm holding you to it. Look, you got football season about to come, start back up again. We, I, If you're not here in Memphis by November 1st, oh, we're going to have some problems. November 1st, I better see you. Wow. Can you make that? Can you make Maybe. that deal with me and by if, November first? If you could also get us the cool Space Jam it swag like bags that up. you got, he, had he got Jam a Space Jam swag box. It's not even a bag; it's a whole box. What's in the box? It's a LeBron oh, action oh. figure, Uno hey. Space Jam Uno. I, can we can we talk about Space Jam? Do we have enough time to talk about Space Jam? Okay, like like CJ, turn turn down the music. I, I, I just I, I really want to talk about the first Space Jam. OK, so so here's my hot take on Space Jam before I even walked in. I went and saw Space Jam. Oh, you um, did the, a new legacy last night. I saw it last night. I'm not going to say anything, but I'm going to say he's, this. Where okay, are you? My, he can't get to Memphis, but he's going to throw out all this stuff he can get. OK, 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 go ahead. You, you saw Space Jam. He doesn't come out for the rest of us. Till Friday. OK, so so I I. I this is me going into this movie. I know that this movie is going to be terrible because the first Space Jam was good only because it was a new concept, not because the movie was actually good. Michael Jordan's acting was terrible. Uh, the tune saved it because it was it was different. It was just a new movie. It was a goat. Like so, you like okay, all right. So now, once you know the storyline, everybody already know the storyline to this movie that's coming mm -hmm. out. We already know the end game what's going to happen we already know that we've seen this movie it, it was it was okay the first time but it was only great because of the concept it's kind of like the saw series you saw the first saw you was like oh this is amazing and then when they got the six to seven you was like okay all right how many times are we gonna beat this dead horse like we 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 know what the concept is we got it it's not as good as the original that's going into this movie right here that's my hot take there's no way that this movie can be successful mm -hmm. or good because the first one was just okay. And it's, it all boils down to the acting. You're a basketball player, not an actor. So was, so was it, it good? good? Like what? What? Where Dude. did you see it? How did you see it? I, 
Well, I, I went in. That was what that was. I got the gift box in the mail. And uh-huh. then I was also gifted with going to the premiere to go see it early. I took the, the wife, the kids. We all went and saw it. Uh, I mean, I'm, I, I, I hope you guys enjoy it. Was it's it good, D'Angelo? You can't say all that and say what your what your mindset was going into it, where you thought about it going. Was we're not saying give anything away. You know, we're we're we we are allowed to talk. Like, we've already talked about. Yeah, we've already <laughs> talked about. Space I, didn't, I didn't. I could. I could talk about it, but I'm not was it going, good? Did you? Did, did you? Good? Did you like it? Did you like? Did you walk out saying okay? No, I hated it. Did your kids like it? Yeah. My kids did like it. Okay, okay so it's a good movie. It's a family movie. You take the kids, and then you turn your mind off. Got it. <laughs> Thanks, D'Angelo. Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're, you're welcome, bro. You're welcome. <laughs> D'Angelo, the movie critic. <laughs> really appreciate hey, it. Hey, I'll tell you this, though. There's a lot of what I love about it is there's a lot of they play into the things that happen in LeBron's life that we all made fun of. So hmm. that right there, laugh. If you're not a LeBron fan, like, ha, 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 you're going to laugh at all the shots you get. <laughs> shot his way but everything so, else you're gonna be like so the stuff that happened in his life like how that guy dunked on him in a scrimmage and they ran around and took the video like that type of stuff they they doing that they making fun at the fact that uh like at one point and I, i'll say this line because i thought it was one of the funnier lines but uh he was like we're not gonna quit and he was like yeah just like you quit on cleveland and went to miami i was like ooh, like yeah they take a shot like that okay so it's like about LeBron. I like it. Okay. okay. Yeah. I'll still watch. I'll still see. Like, yeah. They, they, they take shots at like him calling himself the GOAT or have been compared to the GOAT. It's a lot of jokes like that, but only we would laugh at that. The kids won't. So, uh, and you kind of, you probably got about four or five of those. And then after that, you just, you can turn it off. See that you can go back to sleep. You can chill. You can do whatever you want to do, brother. Cause it's not what you think it is. Good to know. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Yeah. So, okay. Okay. Th- th- that's all. Don't yeah. give us any more. As Don't always, we've anymore. covered all corners of we all really kinds did. of conversations uh, on a Wednesday. I, we look, appreciate it. Look, and then my wife, my wife got mad at me because I told her, I said, I hated this movie. She said, why? I said, because it wasn't believable. She was like, you do realize in the first one, he got snatched down like a golf hole. And I was like, yeah, but it's more believable than what? <laughs> I, mean, just, I didn't like how they got there. I didn't like how they got there. Jessica and I just talked about when you're younger, you don't realize things yeah. when you're watching movies and TV shows. And as you get to an adult, you're like, that's not true. That doesn't happen. And you're like, well, I guess it did happen in the original. And now we realize that, you know, as you get <laughs> yeah. older, we just yeah. change a little bit. I believe so much random stuff. Wild. Yes. <laughs> as a kid, like, it, it made sense. <laughs> mm-hmm. You can su- you can suspend belief a little bit better yeah. when you're a kid and, and, like, make it work. Yeah. So... All right, D'Angelo. Yeah, I've been suspe- the, the, Thank you, guys. The I, music's I, on. I missed you guys last week. <laughs> we missed you, too. Yeah. We really did. I won't know. You won't see me for yeah. the next, I guess. Wow. Yeah, three Wednesdays, I think. Three weeks without hey, Megan. Megan. I, congratulations. I saw something online yeah. because we're friends and we talk all the time. <laughs> and you would have told me. That you're, you're doing some type of Olympic thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, just just like I, you, I thought a friend would tell me they were in Memphis, went to UFC Vegas, they went to see Space mm-hmm. Jam. I mean, I just realized our friendship. We don't talk, but that's what makes us very close friends, you know? <laughs> but thank you. I appreciate it. I really do. That makes no sense at all. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> you know what? I mean, so you leaving me, Jessica, and CJ behind? Yeah. yeah. They're going to hold it down, though. Oh, They're going right. to that wasn't what you were supposed to say. But like, oh, no, I can take y'all. Like, that's not what I wanted to hear. Well, I'm not, le- I'm, I'm not... <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm yes, leaving. I'm not. I'm leaving them, and I'm coming back. I'm coming back, D'Angela. I'm not gone. I'm just She's packing, abandoning us. Packing a bag for three weeks and getting right back on the plane to Memphis. It was an easy flight to find. It wasn't hard to find a flight to Memphis at all. So, I'm coming back. Okay. Well, are you on a direct? Well, before you go, before you go, mm. can I give you an inspirational speech? Since oh. you're not gonna be here the next. Two or three weeks. Okay. <laughs> Megan, I want you to go down there. I want you to show out. I want you to show them what we have known for a very long time that you're really good at what you do. Also, while you down there, please don't let the damn Memphis come out of you because we ain't got no bed money and we are not trying to be associated with somebody that's down there acting the damn fool, getting arrested and doing all that craziness. So don't go down there and embarrass us. Act like you got some damn sense. And get your butt back. 
<laughs> Thank you. It, it, it started, started, it started so nice. out so well. And I'm going to say this. I hope the Memphis comes out of me because I wouldn't be who I am if it wasn't for Memphis. <laughs> the end of the I'm so CNBC. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm talking about I'm talking about the Memphis with the crack bridge. They won't let nobody across the bridge and feel like they. It's getting like fixed. Coffee. We're closer. It's on its way. That's what the news said the other day. We're getting closer to it getting open again. But thank you, Deandro. I appreciate it. I take all you guys' love with me when I leave. I will. Okay. And you better watch on CNBC, CBS. too. And you better not ditch out because CJ and I have three weeks of shows to fill. So we'll see you next week. And Wednesday. he'll get to meet someone new, I guess, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He'll meet somebody. Yeah, we'll, we're figuring it out. We're figuring what? it out. No, not sharing D'Angelo with I'm other not. people. Well, someone's, the, every, someone's going to be in my spot. You yes. know, a lot of our GCM people, Grind City Media pe- people. So you'll get we to meet some, some guest people. co-hosts. Why, why, why we gotta do that? Why we gotta do that? We don't need to feel your see when they start filling your spot because you going somewhere. Then that temporary seat can come permanent. Jessica and CJ, uh-uh. no. CJ are trying to replace me. Jessica and CJ are trying to. We're gonna put a cardboard yeah. cutout of Megan in her seat, and someone can sit here. Also, and they can have to sit next to cardboard Megan and be like, "These are big shoes to fill every day." Can, can we put can we put cardboard Megan in a Wiz T-shirt? <laughs> she has a long plane ride. Maybe she could watch it. Maybe I'll watch it on the plane. Finally. <laughs> also, D'Angelo is that type of friend you don't bring around all of your friends. You get know what so I'm true. saying? So, so no, D, you're not meeting anybody but me and Jessica, dog. We we that's how we rolling. We'll, we'll see you next Wednesday. Well, I, I, I'm just letting you know, like if y'all ever bring me around your friends, I'm gonna act like we got like uh like inside jokes that ain't really inside jokes. Good. I'm gonna make them feel you're I'm that make friend. Them feel like our friendship is way more than what it is. I'm gonna be one of them kind of friends. You're gonna ice the other person out? No. They're, they're, they work with us. They're our wonderful co-workers that's filling in these shoes. <laughs> yeah, they're great. I'm they're a, awesome people, D'Angelo. Well, you're going to have them sit here and be like, this don't This is a, this is a D'Angelo, anything. just CJ conversation. That's gonna I'm be, sorry. <laughs> that's going to be even weirder, CJ. Like, you're just going to sit here, hey, for the next 30 minutes, we don't know how long D'Angelo's going to talk. It could be 30. It could be 40. <laughs> We, we got this. We got this. You are so it's not them that no, we're what? worried about because the GCM crew is phenomenal. All of them are great. We have an amazing lineup. D'Angelo, though, right? Like <laughs> he might offend. He might offend some people. No, he's not going to offend anybody. <laughs> but like it's it's D, man. I don't know how else to describe him other than that's D'Angelo. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna hear this music and say, "What is this? What is this? Is this an organ playing in my ear? What's going on?" They're not gonna, gonna know. Be like, it's nine thirteen. Weren't we supposed to move on? By now? <laughs> you guys said rap at nine o'clock. Y'all said rap. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye, D'Angelo. I will say that whoever does fill this share, you will probably have to tell them that. Like, if, if they are a part of the Angelo conversation, they're gonna probably say like. CJ's playing the wrong song. Like, what is he playing right now? I don't understand the organ. We're not telling them. They're not going to be a part of that conversation. What? (laughs) Well, I think you guys, I'm sure you guys will figure that part out. You Um, can't. Oh, wait. You can't go to the Olympics and then tell us how to do the show while you're gone. I just said y'all will figure that part out. I literally just said. CJ does not listen to the words coming out of my mouth. I said y'all will figure that part out. I will leave y'all to it. Uh, But in the meantime, we're going to get CJ's corner where he will do what he do. Bye bye. <laughs> Acadian Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum, serving the greater Memphis area with exceptional emergency and non emergency pre hospital care. Acadian is looking for more Grizzlies fans to join our growing team of EMTs and paramedics with opportunities in Memphis and other markets. Employee owned, nationally recognized Acadian Ambulance Service. Learn more at memphisemsjobs.com. Kyle, keep trying to bring back Raising the Roof. Oh, when you threw the lob off the backboard to Ja, <laughs> oh I was like, God. Kyle is trying to bring back Raising raise the, the Roof. roof. <laughs> to raise the Roof. My teammates were like, why'd you raise the roof? <laughs> oh, they've never seen He Got Game. He Got Game where in the park they throw it off, the, he catches a dunk off the backboard, and he goes, I'm, I'm, I got hops, I got hops. So that's, that's what I was really doing. The Chris Vernon Show, live daily on GrindCityMedia.com or wherever you get your podcasts.
What's going on, y'all? Welcome to The Corner. Let's catch you up real fast on a story you may have missed. Tennessee has extended men's basketball coach Rick Barnes through the 2025-2026 season. Barnes has led the volunteers to appearances in each of the last three NCAA tournaments. He won an SEC regular season title back in 2018, if I'm not mistaken, and he has signed five five-star prospects in the last three years for the volunteers. Speaking of signing prospects, Tennessee's 2021 signing class was rated as the third best in the country. We got more fun coming your way in pop and double tap next on Rise and Grind. Kane Brown, West and Free Tour. Saturday, October 23rd, FedEx Forum. Special guests, Jordan Davis. And Restless Road. See the meteoric rise of Kane Brown live. Tickets are on sale now at KaneBrownMusic.com. Presented by AEG Presents. Don't miss the newest Grind City Media podcast, Infield Fly, with me, Rob Fisher, along with Lang Whitaker and Keith Murphy. Comes out each Tuesday, and we'll have the latest on our favorite teams and yours. Regional and Superstation teams, the Cardinals, Braves, and Cubs. While going around the horn to check in on the rest of the league, be sure to subscribe today at GrindCityMedia.com, iTunes, Spotify, and SoundCloud. Driven to be the best, it's in the DNA of every Olympic and Paralympic athlete, and in every new Toyota, like the best-selling Tacoma and RAV4 and the best-in-class Highlander. Now you can get $750 customer cash on any new Gas Power 21 RAV4 or aggressively sophisticated Highlander or Highlander Hybrid. Plus, every new Toyota comes with two years no-cost maintenance included. For complete details, go to buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. And welcome back to Rise and Grind. We don't have too much to talk about in Pop of the Morning today, but we do have one thing, and that is Cardi B. She posted on her Instagram story late last night that she has some secret that she is dropping today. She's very excited. She's scared. She's nervous. But all we know that it's coming out today, and she's she can't wait to tell us what it is. What do we think the Cardi B secret? Music related, right? Twins. I think she's having twins. That would be... I don't know. Could you imagine having to get three children, one hundred and fifty thousand dollar charm mm. necklaces? No, I could not. They they got she got that child got more than that. It was like just galore. Everything. Every, everything. The birthday party is, itself was so big and so good. I don't know what it, I don't think it's gonna be twins, but it could be. I feel you like it's music. I think I think, I think it's I music. I feel like that's, that's I the easy it. answer. Music? I think it's I I've heard that Cardi B collab. I, so I've heard, so the rumor is, here's a, here's a rumor that I did hear for this week, is that she's on a collab with Normandy, and Normandy's mm-hmm. coming out with her album. But I don't think that would be, she I knew that, that early, but I feel like that wouldn't be like the news? big secret, unless it's going to be her album. But we've, we've always, she's alluded to her album being right. done. She's alluded to like, remember I dropped the last album when I was pregnant? So this one could be an album, but I know that there's some collab with Normandy, but I feel like it wouldn't be that exciting to post on your Instagram story. In the way of the Instagram story video, I don't know. I just but didn't she didn't get post it on her page. Vibes. I believe like big things, like if it was really, really big, she posted on both. Right. Because not everyone looks at stories, yep. not everyone looks at your page, but she only did her story. And we're de- depicting this Instagram life way too much, but I'm like, hmm. Maybe it's like a maternity line of clothes. I'm- I got the answer if y'all ready Go, for CJ. it. Go, CJ. Okay. Just like Jay-Z and Kanye got together, Jay-Z mm-hmm. R. Kelly back in the day, like we've seen artists get together and do whole albums together. Mm-hmm. Rihanna was seen in the studio. Shut up. So you're, just, so you're just trying to throw Rihanna in it. Oh, but you guys said last Cardi Sunday, B and Rihanna in studio. When I said Rihanna had new music out on Monday, or it's coming, I believe the pessimistic person on this show was like, no, no, no. But now, today, on a Wednesday, I have changed my I, I, I had time to my marinate oh my, on it. To You're right, Megan. It is new music. Cardi B talking about <laughs> big news coming. Rihanna, Cardi B, Best of Both Worlds uh, album. I don't know what they would call it, but that they're, they're out there. Yeah. They're getting okay. together. Well, we have, I can't wait to have, until we have Devin on because I, Devin's on, Friday, are we, <laughs> Devin on Fridays this right. week. Okay. <laughs> because with new music, I know we're waiting for Cardi B. It's a Wednesday. 
with new music, I saw, I don't know who this is. I don't know who it's going to be. There's some rapper. Okay. There's only two rappers who are billionaires, right? Okay. Only two. Billionaire rapper coming out with some new music on Friday. Who I don't know if that's rappers? true or not. Jay-Z and Kanye. Kanye. That's it. Does Jay Z's count? Like, isn't that they, him and look, Beyonce? No, but it he counts. counts okay. He counts as a billionaire. It's or money. it's just I think I think, it, I think it's Kanye because we we don't know what Kanye's been doing, and I know that Kanye's gone through a lot. Is and he still with Kanye's that girl? Going through a lot. Yeah. Oh. For, for all we know, I mean, like I like, like I know the actual truth. Megan's for all like, we yeah, know, actually, I got <laughs> dinner with them the other day. For all day we in know, is yes. Okay. Yes. Intriguing. So we'll see. We'll see what it is. We'll I see more stories tomorrow. popped into the pop of the morning uh, as we started the pop of the morning. Oh. So the only thing I that I know about is the Ashley Graham is pregnant. I forgot that we sent that like right after the show yesterday. She announced yesterday, supermodel announced that she is pregnant with her second child with this beautiful picture that her husband took of her. Um, they already have a two-year-old son, and they're adding on to their family. Congrats, congratulations gorgeous picture do you follow her i don't oh she's a good follow okay i might i mean well, some, uh, i actually pregnant her pregnant baby is she's a good follow so i unfollowed like all the celebrities i used to follow her i used mm -hmm. to follow a lot of people and then i unfollowed a lot of celebs and then i'll get them in my little like recommended for you page yeah. so that's how i get stuff but i don't think she's annoying i think she's like i, I love her and her husband together i think they're just so adorable they I met at church on an, in, in an you, obviously i like this they met at an, in an elevator at their church it's megan's dream <laughs> exactly i, I usually take the stairs oh shoot. so now i'm gonna take the elevator at church because mm. they met at what what how does this happen it never happens to me and i'm an avid church Goer. Like what? Maybe you'll meet someone in the elevator at CNBC. Mm, maybe. Huh, yeah, you're. Yeah. You know, no, just keep those eyes. I open. prefer church though. This is our. Oh, not yet. Chris and I were trying to figure out our anniversary because we don't really have. We always just do like our meet anniversary. Mm -hmm. I think it's next week. That's oh. when you're gone, so you'll miss. You'll miss our. Is he coming on the show? No. Oh. Maybe. Maybe we will. Maybe we'll have. I'm surprised Chris that was an Olympic correspondent. I'm surprised that show. wasn't a. Um, I don't know. I'm surprised it wasn't like a thought, like to have Chris, Chris fill in on that. Well, actually, the Monday <laughs> oh, it was. Yeah. And they denied it. He can maybe come for a guest. Oh, we can't have the whole show. I don't think we can have him for the whole show. Mm. We'll talk about it after. Yeah. Well, the August 9th, that slot's open. What? CJ. Oh yeah, August 9th is open. That's what right. What is CJ? He's, he's in the chat probably. I'm sure something's going on in the chat. Anyway, the other big pop news yesterday: uh, the Emmy nominations came out. They are all over the place, but a lot of really good stuff. Streaming mm -hmm. dominated everything at this point. The Crown and The Mandalorian both got 24 nominations, so they have the most of anyone. Um, just some some cool things. I was excited to see Ted Lasso become the most nominated freshman comedy in Emmy's history with 20 nominations, and it should have infinite nominations, and apparently season two is just as good as season one, and it comes out next week, and I'm so excited about it. But there were a lot of good stuff. Uh, MJ Rodriguez, who's in Pose, became the first trans actor to be nominated for a lead acting award. She's mm -hmm. nominated for lead actress in a drama series. The, um, the one that was like, is interesting to me was the Lovecraft Country. Yes. To have 18 Emmy nominations. And it's a show that I don't watch. Make it make I, sense. I haven't seen it. It's so good. That's what everyone keeps I don't saying. think you would like it, but it's so good. Everyone keeps telling me it's really good. And, you know, it's on the list of the many. I know I keep saying it's on the list of the many lists that I do have. Add it to things, the list. Of things I want to watch, but I'm just so I'm just so taken back because I know it wasn't renewed for a second yeah. season, but yet you come out and it has 18 nominations. So in my head, it's okay. I hope, I hope whoever that showrunner is, producer, director, that they're trying to pitch it to another network where they can get it on another streaming platform. I don't think there needs to be another season of Lovecraft. You don't they, think there needs to be? No, they tied that bow up rather nicely for me. I'm I'm good. So to there go was the only issue hanger. I have with it is that the actors thought that there was going to be a season two. So some of them Was there a cliffhanger? No. You, it, you, it, it answered it all your like, questions. It felt like a limited series that oh, okay. could have ended right then and there. And I do think that's fine. I think we need to get back to a place where we are comfortable, especially mm. with limited series. When they're really only good. Limited, I know they're so good. You more, but at least it's a situation where you're not like on season five why are we still telling the story? What, season 22 of, of Grey's Anatomy? Anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> Games of, Game of Thrones. The, yes. the, uh, the RSI department points out that Great Lovecraft example. Country is based off of a book. Well, mm -hmm. uh -huh. the, the, there's only one book, if I'm not mistaken. So do you want them to tell that story in a way that's not true to, to the author like we saw in Game of Thrones? Game of Thrones is great as long as they're following what's happening in the book. The second the books run out, 
Those last, but what, I'm, two I'm seasons? Just, Game of Thrones is terrible. <laughs> I'm with Jessica on this one, just like what Jessica said, of the actors. And all I've seen is, like, I saw Journey had a comment on yes. it. I've seen, I've seen those comments, and then I've seen fans' reaction. I'm like, so, it, obviously, it was really, really good, and everyone did think that it was coming back. It, it does it, it does it leave a bad taste in your mouth, kind of like what like what happened here? Unless you hear more from the producers, showrunners of talking about, hey, you know, no, no, no. But the way that it's always been, I mean, for me, reading in the media and the news, it's not renewed. It's not been like, oh, it's over. We thought it was gonna be over. No, it's, it was not renewed for a second season. So when you say not renewed, that means that there was a there was a question to of uh, be renewed. Yeah, so that makes me kind of like odd. I thought also odd, but amazing. Um, Don Cheadle was in Falcon and the Winter Soldier for 98 seconds and he was nominated for Best Supporting mm-hmm. Actor. So that's a... Was that part really good? The, the I don't know. Seconds? Like, oh. I watched it. Oh. It's, it's was best, it good? It's Best Guest Actor is what okay. he's nominated for. And that no, this is not, not particularly the uh, great. Like oh. he's, like you said, three minutes of him and the new Captain America, spoiler alert people, Sam riffing on one another going back, Anthony Mackie, uh, riff, riffing on one another going back and forth. Uh, for those who don't know, Anthony Mackie's character, Falcon at the time, ended up paralyzing War Machine. That's Don Cheadle's character in um, Captain America Civil War. But now they've, they've buried the hatchet, so to speak. Me and Megan. Yeah, totally. <laughs> okay. I don't know what it is. I think it's like you, my I brain think you're, literally shuts off. It does. It starts, starts, we never starts it. doing that. I think we, we got to work on the way that you break down Captain America. We might need a graphic. Think, I don't know. I might need visual help. Yeah. In this situation, I might be a better visual learner. And he gets, he gets the hands going. And you're like, I don't know what he's talking about. Just, and the, and the second I tap out, hand. I can't tap back in no. because I don't know. And you don't have a comeback. You have to just be like, oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, great. That's Sounds fun. good. Yeah. I will say uh, Hamilton got nominated for things. And can we just be done? Hamilton? <laughs> yes. From like the years ago? Yes. Oh, because but the, the, but the, 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 it came out on Disney+. Plus. On Disney+. Plus. Plus. On during the pandemic. On my list. I never finished it. Oh gosh, I never. I love musicals. I never started it, but it's on my list. I'm just a little over Hamilton. To watch. It, it had its run. It's had its time in the sun. Okay, um, it can be done. And then my favorite actress, Jean Smart, is nominated for two acting categories, and that makes me excited for Mayor of Easttown and for Hacks, two that you mm-hmm. should add on your HBO list. I'm tired of awards shows. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So I, I know. I, honestly, I know it means something. I didn't even know the Emmys were like. I didn't know the Emmy nominations were happening. Yesterday, I think, just, I think I think we're all like just tapped. I think these last two weeks we were just like tapped out, yeah. tapped out of certain like things. Something, that, with something the that I did, yeah. So yeah, definitely was. Def something that I did see that I forgot to send, and we can't even show the video probably. But Kate Moss is the new face of Skims, which is I saw that yesterday. I was pretty. That's pretty. That's pretty that's cool. Pretty high up there. Yeah, that's like. I mean, I I I actually made me go to the Skims website because like I really want to know what this Skims like. With you know the the pricing isn't terrible my friends who wear it swear by that's it. what everyone they everyone says that it. so i'm like i might i might have to like the one thing that i did want was sold out and i, I can't wait for these little drops every time that's i've wanted the, something it's that's been the sold thing out. that it's annoying with like all this it's a drop like why can't you just go to like like you do anything else and just i just need a you know nude pair of spanks or what it, it, skims whatever it's called and like they're always like oh the drop comes out July. I'm, I'm not waiting it's just not it's not the sneakers app like come on now are Skims app gonna be the next thing? I like not. drops at nine a.m. Are that. we all like Kylie that? Cosmetics does right, that too right. with their new stuff? I will I say think tomorrow their websites to so both Kylie Cosmetics oh. KKW went down for a, a, for a, uh, for amount of like a couple of days. It's coming back up, but the rumor is they're well they're going vegan. That's like that's like what what, what we do now. They're going vegan cruelty free, which I thought okay. all makeup is. Which yeah. we've, we've got to learn more about your makeup. Yes, um, what you put on your lips, your lipstick. But they're going vegan cruelty free. And for KKW as well, the like, people are trying to figure out what's Kim going through. They're rebranding for KKW. What is she going to do with the W? And they're waiting um. to see when it come, when the website relaunches, is she going to, she's going to have like one site to get all of her stuff, her skims, like, you know, it'll be a lot, a lot e- more accessible to find all of her products that, that she now sells. She's a her billionaire. Legal work? Well, right. Her legal work. But what's that well. W? Is it, all, is it still going to be Kim Kardashian West or is that rebranding? How are you going to rebrand Kim that? Kim Kardashian ways. Kim Kardashian. I don't know. I can't wait, though, because like when we were just in the Atlanta airport, one, they have the Kylie 
like makeup, mm-hmm. th- like um, dispenser what, account, dispensary, yeah. <laughs> not dispensary, <laughs> but yeah, I get what you're saying. <laughs> you know what I mean? But that's so weird to me. And then I was gonna say, there's a spank store. Why are there always spank stores in airports? I bought some spanks. It'd be because in the airport, yeah. no one wants to put on spanks before you sit on a flight. No, but you, but you purchase. I've purchased a pair of spanks. I was thinking. I, I think I had a. Um, I had a job interview at the oh. time. Like I forgot some, I, for, I forgot a pair. So you're running through like, oh, I'll just get, I'll just get, you have, you, have, you have a wedding that you're That's going true. to. So I do think like I, air, airport stuff comes in like handy. I, I yeah. purchased the thing, like things that like you had said, why would you buy this at an airport? But when you're at the airport, you're just going got to an different eyeliner. events. Right. Yeah. You forget a lot. And you, you will pay a premium for it though, but yes. you, for, you, you do forget a lot. You don't have, you don't have a lot of time. Um, I appreciate there. when there is, some stores yeah. to look through because if you're stuck in an airport i'd rather like skim through stores than mm-hmm. just sit on my butt waiting for a flight and spanks are hard to find too in your size oh yeah. even if you, when you go to the website or go to nordstrom rack they're, you want, they're like they're all out of certain always size out yes so I, I i could see how the spanks went the one store that atlanta has a sean john have been had has been had a sean john yes and i've always wondered <laughs> well i my 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 gate was right in front of it and i had the whole this was just like a year ago the whole entire time i just looked to see who's no one walks in the sean john store but i was like <laughs> why is this still open like i love i love you some diddy i love me some puff but i, I don't know what his name is right now whatever his name is but who's walking in sean john we ate at the Ludacris restaurant and it's really good. I will say, if you're ever in stuck Atlanta? in the Atlanta airport and looking for some place to what eat, it called? it's called like um, the chicken, and, chicken and beer. Oh no, is what it's it. called. And there's a cardboard oh. cutout of Ludacris. So if there's cardboard cutout hmm. of Ludacris, we can get a cardboard cutout of Megan. Okay, but <laughs> it was it was actually great airport food and it was packed. Air, Atlanta Air, Atlanta airport has the best food yes, in my opinion. I agree. As the I best used to food. think Houston, Houston's gone down, Atlanta is up the best they have a soul food spot in the little food area get your like they vegetable a sushi plate restaurant that's considered the one best. of the best restaurants in airports oh like across the, the globe the cities. no like, <laughs> like are people going to airports just to say i just got to get this food i got to buy a ticket so i can eat at this yeah. random sushi spot in an airport but okay anyway all right let's do some double tap or nah before we get out of here the uh, nba 2k 22 covers just dropped right because we just seized yes. this didn't we not Candace Parker is on it. Luka Doncic is also on it as well. Is there another one? Yeah, so this is the this is the general cover right here. It's Luka. It's on the cover of most of the games. Then you get the Legends cover, which has. Well, then you get. This is Candace Parker on the GameStop exclusive cover. So oh. this cover is exclusive to GameStop right here. So that's an exclusive cover. And then you get a Legends cover with Kevin Durant, uh, Kareem, and Dirk on it. Hmm, so it's so three cool. different covers. I, might, I actually might buy that. Oh, wait, play? no, we still don't have a PS5. <laughs> Can you not play on the other PS, whatever? I don't, I don't think so. Oh, you have to get a PS5. Are those still hard to find? Yeah, they, they were the last time I checked, which was like a, co- a month ago or oh, so. Okay. It was still an issue. Did you get one? I told TJ? Chris he can get a PS6. <laughs> no, I can't afford that. Yeah. No, I... Okay. I can't. So none of us can play. Well, well I, f- I feel as if like feel in like this Lang building, has it. right? This building, yeah. will, you have they have a PS5, so you can play it here at work okay. as part of your job. Okay. On the jobs hours. Really tough work. Mm-hmm. Really, really tough work. Okay, next up, we have the picture of Vlad Guerrero Jr. back when he was a kid with his dad at the All-Star Game. And like it says, this little boy grew up to become MVP of the 2021 MLB All-Star Game. Also, his gr- glove last night was a picture of him and his dad from the All-Star Game, which is adorable. And I just love families and sports mm-hmm. that's super cute super adorable we also have a picture of the craft ice cream yeah. that we teased at the beginning <laughs> of the show if you want to see a picture of and what it looks like i think this is vanilla ice cream i really do i'm hoping wait, it I, is wait 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 shoot I got so it's limited edition van lewin craft macaroni and cheese flavored. i found the answer um hold on keep talking you found Gosh. it and you didn't read it i forgot it was during a break <laughs> okay Me- the idea was to use Fair trade, high-end ingredients, many of them organic, to make their own artisanal flavors. Artisanal? Artisanal? Flavors that include honeycomb, marionberry cheesecake, vegan Earl Grey tea, and now Kraft mac and cheese. So there will be a sweetness element to it, but it is based in the mac and cheese flavor. I feel like reading all that, I don't think we got the answer. 
yeah, I thought <laughs> in my head it made a lot more sense, and then I read it out loud, and I was it's, like, I don't know if we got the answer. Okay, fine. I you guys go. You guys go try it. Like it was a blend of honeycomb and cheese, mm -hmm. but then I realized those are other flavors. Yeah, I think you guys go try it. I'll let you and CJ um, be the guinea pigs of that one. If I come across it, I'm looking for it today. If I come across it, I'll bring it in. Okay. No, not bring it in. Just, okay, well, you're going to bring it in and then eat it live? Yeah, and you're going to get a scoop in just because I'm not eating that. I don't eat, eat things that I don't know. If you go get it, I will <laughs> I don't try eat, it. I don't eat things that I do not know. It's not red. Yes, but that that's like that that falls but it's into on the color wheel. I'm going to sneak mm -hmm. it into your tea. You're not even going to notice. I haven't it. had tea disgusting. recently. Have you noticed that? Have you, you have noticed that? I've been trying to not drink. Yeah, I'm trying to get off of it because my sleeping pattern is going to change. So I need to like not oh. not crave the tea like I normally do. <laughs> I'm trying. To, I'm trying slowly to change my sleeping pattern so it's not as much of a shock when Best I leave. Luck. <laughs> I know. I was on the West Coast for nine days and I can't get back. Yeah. To a normal sleeping pattern. Good All right. Last but not least, we have Zyla Avangard, the winner of the Spelling Bee. She showed off her dribbling skills on Ryan and Kelly. She's amazing. Oh, slow mo. So was this cool. this morning? No, this was yesterday. Yesterday. This was yesterday on Kelly and Ryan. And yeah, I mean we we knew she had the skills. We've seen the skills on various different other videos that that's gone viral, but to see her do it there. And look how she does it. To see the, to know that it's like it's like live live and even to see like how she's so calm and just so cool and collected like she's like it's just a normal day for her. A normal day. She's so cool and she's made spelling cool. Like no disrespect to former spelling bee. Winners, what was, what was but the spelling we bee have movie? Not spoken. Akila and the Bee. Yeah. I love that movie. Um, were you ever in the spelling bee? No, I can never get out of the classroom thing. Oh, okay. Like the classroom, like no. The spelling has never been my thing. I've never, I've never strived to do like oh the spelling bee. Like I'm I want good. To be a great speller. No, yeah. Spell my sisters were that, not me. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, I think we can hustle up and get out of here. Busy night ahead. A WNBA All Star Game, six o'clock ESPN. Then we do have Game Four between the Bucks and the Suns. That's at eight o'clock on ABC. Also, if you're looking for something else, there's a new E60 tonight on Lorenzen Wright. It's called A Murder in Memphis. That's on ESPN at 8. If you don't catch it live, you can always catch it on the app. Yeah. I, I, yeah. And yeah, Loki. And CJ's watching Loki. <laughs> Everyone's it is, watching. It is, My the, timeline the finale. is the people who woke yeah, up. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's turned. I, 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 I didn't say. All I said was CJ is watching. Out of the three of us, who put Loki? Did you put Loki on No, there? I did not. So once again, I can't, I can't like criticize for just stating the facts. Let me tell you CJ what's going on in Loki. Loki. So I you guys can stop paying attention. I'm already watching it. Oh, I thought you were going to I can't. It. Robbie's screaming at me not to because people still haven't seen it. Uh -oh. oh, don't say you it. You watched it this morning? Mm, maybe. You watched it already? Possibly. That's wild. Okay. Congrats. Well, he's Wario seeing Loki. Is it worth watching? Yeah, absolutely it's worth. Megan, you don't wake up. It drops at like 11 uh, Eastern. So midnight over here or 10 over here. I can't remember. You don't wake up and, and, and watch it at two in the morning if it's not good. Okay. The way well, I'm, Marvel I'm tells you were, stories, you weren't let great. down. You were, it wasn't a letdown for you. No. Okay. So everyone, go watch. Well, not ev yeah. If you if everyone, that, Megan, go watch Loki, like Megan. Loki. Go watch it, Megan. Okay, Megan's C watching Loki. CJ, I'll add it to the list. Oh, no, <laughs> it is long. I'll add it to the list of things to watch. But in the meantime. We'll be back tomorrow. We're mm -hmm. going to be talking about all the WNBA to the NBA action. I hope you everyone gets some sleep tonight. It's going to be hard. So bring the, I'll bring the tea tomorrow. You bring the coffee. You always have the coffee. I forget. Every you never forget the coffee, do you? No, no I don't. It's that, it's it's, that serious. Yeah, it's very weird. I think it's like a crutch at this point. Okay. I don't think I need it as much as it's just a part of my like habitual life in the morning. That that cup that cup will be here tomorrow. Jessica will be here tomorrow. There are different cups. So let's be clear. I wash the cups. I I, I, I didn't. I believe I know you I was saying it. it for me, for oh. my sake. I just wanted to make sure. People I washed the cups. That I just used the same cup. They did not buy at question your washing skills. We. I, I was hoping that you did, so I never you questioned never it. But thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. If I ever come over, you see your house, and you give me that. You say, "Make want some water," and that cup that cup shows up with like the coffee ring on the bottom. Like, can I the cup, please? Yeah, just do please? something else. All right. We'll be here tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow's Thursday. We'll see you then. This has been Rise and Grind with Jessica and Megan. Tune in live daily at 8 a.m. or on demand by heading to GrindCityMedia.com or GrindCityMedia on YouTube.